The Shortcuts app started out on iOS for iPhone and iPad, but has now made its way to the Mac here in macOS Monterey. Shortcuts are automations that can run repetitive tasks in order to save you time. Here in my Shortcuts app, I already have some shortcuts saved because these have synced from my iOS devices. That option can be turned off in Shortcut Preferences here. Each step within a shortcut is known as an action. Some will have very few actions, like this text last image shortcut. Others, like Photo Grid or Calculate Tip, will have several actions to run in order to complete the shortcut. Double click to open a shortcut and view each action within it. Click on the play button here to run the shortcut from this window. So I could quickly calculate a tip, which I probably won't ever need to do here on my Mac. This shortcut is better to have on my iPhone or Apple Watch. So let's go over to the gallery to find some shortcuts better suited for the Mac. In here we can browse a variety of pre-made shortcuts that can be downloaded. Double click to view the details of each and click the Add button to download the shortcut to your All Shortcuts folder. When I download the How Many Days in Tell shortcut, as I do that, I'm going to need to enter the day that I'm counting down to. I'm going to enter Christmas Day. Now open the shortcut and we can see the actions needed to make it work. Click the Play button to run it. We are able to edit these actions, so if I'd rather count down to December 28th, I can just edit the specified date. I could also duplicate this How Many Days Until shortcut, and then enter a different date and end up with two separate shortcuts. On the right side of the window, we have the Action Library which will let us add actions into a shortcut or build a new shortcut from scratch, which we'll do shortly. Next to that is the Shortcut Details tab. In here, we're able to set shortcuts to appear up in the menu bar or exist as a quick action in the finder. We can even make a keyboard shortcut or a shortcut. For this one, I'll make it available up in my menu bar and use the shortcut command Control c to run it right from the finder whenever I want. So that gives me a shortcuts icon up in my menu bar. Click and the countdown shortcut appears. I can also use the keyboard shortcut that I set up to run the countdown. Now let's create a new shortcut from scratch. I often need to create a splash screen graphic that has a play button overlaid on it for certain lessons. Normally getting this done would involve taking a screenshot of the first frame of the video, bringing it into Pixelmator Pro, applying a play button overlay, then resizing the image, and finally saving it out for the web. With the correct combination of actions, I will be able to create a shortcut that will nearly do all of that for me. All of these actions can be found within the Actions Library here. I'll be using a few that are built into every Mac automatically, and a couple that will only appear if Pixelmator Pro is installed on the Mac. I need to start with the Get Selected Files in Finder action that will use the screenshot that I take of the initial movie frame. Next, I need to grab the Pixelmator Pro overlay action. Within this action, I then need to choose the image to overlay on the file selected above. I have that already saved in a folder called Graphics. Click Show More, and I can tell Pixelmator how to size and position the overlaid image. I'm going to have it put in the lower right 
make it 350 by 350, and I'll lower the opacity a little. Next, I'll want to add the resize action for Pixelmator Pro, and I'll set it to be 2200 pixels wide and automatic height. Next, I'll add the optimize image for web action and set the format to JPEG. Finally, I need to add a save action and have that ask me where to save the resulting file. Up at the top, I'll name this play button shortcut and I'll have it pin to my menu bar. Now I can quit the Shortcuts app and select the screenshot that I already have on my desktop. Notice that no play button is overlaid on this yet. So with that selected, I need to activate the shortcut from the menu bar and let it run. Once it's complete, I'll just need to choose where to save the resulting image. I'll also put it on my desktop. And here it is saved with the play button now overlaid. That saved me several repetitive steps and probably a couple minutes. We're able to, of course, come back into the Shortcuts app and tweak the actions to adjust the size or location of the overlay. The next time I run it, the results will reflect those adjustments. So that's an overview of the Mac Shortcuts app and what we can do with it. It can be a little confusing at first trying to figure out what actions to use when you're building shortcuts from scratch. So I'd try using some of the shortcuts provided in the gallery first, and then as you explore those, making your own will become easier.